I have drawn in uh, little uh, basic uh, design. I'm doing a thistle. Uh, I did not uh, make it uh, super accurate, but I've got a basic outline there. And I'll start by outlining that in thread, and then I'll go back and, uh, and do some filling to uh, <coughs> increase the um, definition and do some shading with different colors. I'm starting out with a real pale green, and uh, then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show you different steps as I go. Um, <coughs> I have a sliding mat on my uh, machine base because that's going to make the uh, hoop uh, move a little better. It covers the, the little bumps that it kind of edge over the machine. Uh, I have uh, my feed dogs dropped. I have my foot removed, and I even took the little uh, screw out that holds the foot on. Hopefully that'll make you be able to see it better. Um, that's, uh, that's about it. I've got uh, embroidery thread uh, in the machine and an embroidery needle. Uh, I've got my fabric in my hoop as tight as I can get it. Um, that helps to keep the... Uh, the work from puckering and it actually helps to form the stitches. Uh, there's no uh, stabilizer or anything, just uh, just tight fabric and uh, so uh, let me get to stitching a little bit and then uh, I'll show you a few more uh, steps as I go. Let me first try and zoom in so you can hopefully so you can see it a little better. I think that's better. Anyway, I'm going to start with uh, some outline stitching. My, uh, my basic design has been drawn on uh, using a uh, uh, chalk uh, pencil. Uh, and uh, I want to get it stitched in so it doesn't uh, disappear. Uh, those, uh, those pencils are great, but they rub off pretty easily. So Anyway, pull up my thread, make sure my foot is, my uh, pressure is down, even though there's no foot. If you don't remember to lower that uh, uh, bar there, you'll, uh, you'll end up with some uh, Messed up thread on the back, and uh, one of the uh, uh, problems that I have with this is uh, getting uh, with a big hoop uh, is getting the. Uh, Piece to move where you want it to when it ends up hitting the, uh, the edge of the uh, uh, machine. So you may have to do a lot of turning of the hoop to make it do what you want. Um, One of the important parts about this is that we're not going a million miles an hour uh, and we're, uh, we're not uh, trying to make eight million tiny little stitches all at once. So it's a little different uh, than uh, what you... Uh, may be used to in, a, in an electric machine. And I'm not, I'm not making my outlining perfect 
by any stretch of the imagination here. I'm just getting it in so I can uh, see where I'm going better. I'll, uh, I'll do some refining as I go when I start filling it in. basically going to be enough to get me going, uh, but I'm going to have to adjust my tension because I'm seeing that uh, my top thread is a little tight, so let me uh, see if that helps. And my next, yeah that's better. I'll try and keep my uh, fingers out of the way here, but basically now I'm I go in and fill in. wind off of that thread spool very smoothly. Um, I don't keep the thread on the thread pin on top of the machine. I have it on a uh, stand in the back. Um, so it, instead of having to turn the spool, it's pulling off the top. The uh, there's a lot of tension on the thread. It makes for it, uh, a real tight um, pulling on it, and uh, it'll uh, it'll mess up your um, mess up your stitches. happening is it's sliding off or it's a it's a brand new spool and it's catching it's uh, the thread slides under it I don't know if that makes any sense but anyway you'll be able to tell when there's a hang up
someone recently asked about when uh, they first started doing machine embroidery, uh, and uh, turns out, I found out, that uh, Singer uh, had books about uh, machine embroidery is basically as soon as they started selling sewing machines. So it is not uh, anything new. You may have seen things that were done in 1900 that you thought, wow, they were really doing a lot of handwork. It may, in fact, have been done on a, on a sewing machine. Been, uh, been going on for a long time. Of course, they didn't have, you know, it was done this way, and a little hoop, and uh, a lot of uh, hand operation, not the uh, computer uh, programs that we have today. But I think it's kind of fun to sort of be, your, uh, be the guy that the stitching yourself different anyway. Uh, I was able to uh, um, draw my own design, uh, but if you're not a, a drawing person, there's plenty of things out there that are open source online type uh, images that, that you could uh, print out and simply trace. Um, so you don't need to you don't need to really be an artist to get the actual stitching done. You simply need to be uh, able to uh, mechanically do it. Uh, so if you, if you can't draw the design, it's certainly okay to uh, trace one that's already been done, as long as, like I said, as long as it's open source, that it's not a copyrighted image. Because um, we don't want to be borrowing or stealing uh, other people's work. What I have found, uh, as I'm really just learning how to do this, and uh, what I have found helps me the most is that uh, I get much, much better stitching if I can really keep this machine going at a nice, slow pace. If I go fast, I don't get embroidery stitches, I get all tiny straight stitches. And there may be times when you want to put in some straight stitches into an embroidery piece, like if I want to uh, put in an, a, a line down the center that shows more, uh, that might be an appropriate place to do that. But mostly you don't want uh, those straight stitch type stitches, you want bigger stitches. And the way bigger stitches happen is by uh, how much you move your hands and how much uh, uh, speed there is as you're doing that. So if you uh, pumping your treadle really, really fast and uh, moving your hands slow, you're going to get a million tiny stitches. If you're moving your uh, feet really slow and getting a very slow uh, speed on the, on the treadle and moving your hands slowly, you get bigger uh, stitches. And when you get really good at it, I'm not there yet, but um, uh, when they, uh, when when people who are really good at this, if you watch them do it, it's just amazing. They can uh, they can regulate that needle 
to such a degree that um, you can pinpoint a stitch and uh, know exactly how long it's going to turn out. Make great, beautiful, accurate satin stitch outlining on things. Can all be done. It's just uh, a matter of uh, refining your eye, hand, foot coordination. And like I said, I'm starting to get better at it. I'm still feeling like I have a long way to go, but it's, uh, it's certainly improving. I uh, also find that it's easier for me when I've got my hands closer to where the needle is going in and out, but I'm trying to keep my hands away a little bit so that you can uh, see it better, hopefully. Um, but really, it's easier when you're when your fingers are almost right on top of it. Uh, so, take that for what it's worth. some variation, even though I'm using the same color throughout, the way that the, uh, the light shines on it does make it look as if there's more variation in color than there really is. After I get this all, this base uh, layer all filled in with the same thread color, uh, I'm going to go back with a a darker thread and do some shading to uh, make that uh, make the uh, uh, the leaves have more dimension. but I didn't show you the whole machine, so there it is. That's a uh, Montgomery Ward uh, signature series, probably from the 60s, I would guess. It's in a treadle base. Uh, it has a motor on it, but I'm not using that. I'm using just the treadle uh, to make it run. And uh, I've got the uh, feed dogs dropped and the foot off and the hoop is in. And let me, uh, let me see if I can get it to uh, show up what I'm doing better. It just doesn't like to focus for me for some reason. I think it does better 
some days than others. Let's see if this helps. Nope. Well, someday I'll get a better camera, but you can get the idea. <clears throat> so, well, while I was uh, uh, finished that, and I did the uh, uh, the top of a thistle, I used a variegated thread for that. Uh, now I'm going to do some highlighting and shading with uh, a uh, a dark green. I've got white in my bobbin right now, so hopefully that won't be coming up to the top. <clears throat> Let me just get that out of the way. Now, uh, I don't know if you can see it. You see that the white is coming up? That means I've got a tension problem, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make some adjustments and I'll be right back. Well, the problem was, as the thread comes off, it keeps uh, sliding underneath the spool and getting hung up and uh, getting caught in uh, uh, a, a gouge on the side of the spool and it kept wanting to be pulling tight so and to do some adjusting I added a thread stand that seems to be working okay um, so I'm I'm working on shading uh, with the darker thread the uh, uh, let's see if you can see there if I turn it uh, process is the same feet going really slow so you don't get carried away um, keep your hands uh, obviously out of the needle but uh, keep them close to your work you get more control it'll help you uh, if you keep that uh, pressure on the piece to keep the uh, material close to that uh, base of that machine. Keep it from bopping up and down. Again, I think the big challenge here is learning how to regulate your speed. Um, and uh, stop and start that treadle without uh, having to uh, use your hands. And that, that comes with a lot of practice. If you've never used a treadle before, uh, it might be a good idea to spend some time just practicing straight stitches and uh, learn how to get that control with your foot so that you uh, um, you can get that uh, machine to do what you want it to. It's not as easy as you might think to get that uh, feeling for making it uh, respond uh, to the speed you want and get that um, machine to turn in the right direction. You know, if, you, if your, uh, your uh, treadle will actually go depending on which direction you're pushing it, you can actually inadvertently make your machine start running backwards in which case it won't be sewing any stitches, it will be just creating a giant tangled mess. So you gotta have practice 
starting and stopping so that those kinds of things aren't happening to you. But anyway, the moral of the story is what's a big challenge is just learning the treadle, not so much learning the embroidery as much as it is learning to do, learning to make the treadle uh, operate the way you want it to. Modern machines, when you do embroidery, they'll have you use a stabilizer on the back, and that helps to prevent puckering and uh, extra problems with the machine. Uh, in this, uh, your your tight fabric and your um, uh, moving slowly and having your tension adjusted properly is uh, all that's needed really to keep uh, from having too much puckering. Having said that, I have a little pucker here and that's where that thread hung up and was causing me that a bunch of problems. Uh, but if I, uh, if I press that a little bit, that'll come out so you won't see it. Uh, of course, this is rayon thread, so be careful when you press it. Uh, we don't want to don't want to have a major meltdown. Want to try and get a little more. So there it is. I think it turned out pretty neat. So um, that's going to probably turn into, uh, well, it could be a patch and a quilt, uh, but in this case, I think I'm going to make it into a book cover. Um, I, I may consider uh, coming back and doing just a little more touch up, but for the most part, that's it. Uh, and. Uh, uh, I think I think uh, I'm gonna be making more because this is kind of fun. <laughs>